Y'all was waiting on me to find the good stuff, huh? I like to look for the money. <laughs> Chris knows this yard like the back of his hand. Pop, poppity. Finding hidden gems. Phone charger. <laughs> Got a little uh, blood test, diabetes or something. Somebody could have needed that the next day when the car was repoed. You find guns, drugs, money, bullets, uh, people's information. Yeah, ain't nobody been through this car yet. And things that thieves could use to rip you off. Well, it might be a bank account. Easy targets. ABC News 4 found at Low Country Salvage Yards. We stopped by Coastal Auto Parts and Auto Salvage where rows of cars are lined up, waiting to be crushed or sold for parts. But inside these cars, hidden gold in paper form, hiding under seats. And you'd come up in here and then you would pull the seat up. Sitting in glove compartments. Paperwork most people wouldn't leave sitting out at home, but Chris found. I ain't planted none of this now. This is... This is... It's real TV. Chris showed us how easy it is for your information to end up in the wrong hands. Medicaid number, social security number. It's right here, Bo. Information left in cars after an accident, repossessed or broken down. You know, with this type of information, I can not just become you, but I can ruin your credit. And these were just in abandoned cars at a salvage yard. We showed what we found Everything to Detective Dustin time. Turner. To leave this kind of stuff behind is a uh, it's amazing. He's currently investigating up to 25 theft cases. Stealing identity in, in South Carolina, it, it, you don't really have to have a whole lot. You only have to have one piece of information. Like a driver's license number. Turner says shred paperwork. If you get into an accident, go back and clean out your car. And if you suspect your identity has been stolen, check your bank statements looking for $1 charges. I see this uh, strange dollar charge, but I don't know what it's for and you don't think anything of it, then a week later, you know, your bank account's empty. Look at that social security number right there, bam. And if you see a suspicious transaction, report it to your local law enforcement agency. Something this victim did. Somebody had fraud already, said right there. Let's see what we got here. Mixed in this mess, we found this invoice. A claim from a woman reporting identity theft, enough information to steal her ID again. I could probably use that, that little bit of information to violate you or become you. Dear mom and dad, I am so sorry, but I really can't do this anymore. If you didn't know, you would never know. I have felt trapped for so long and I don't want to feel this way anymore. She hid it all. There is nothing you could have done. I can't even help myself. Did her best to blend in. I now hate myself as much as everyone tells me that they hate me. Until the pain became too much. I'm sorry, and I love you all, Emily. Now, everyone knows. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to talk to everyone today. And Emily Torchiana wouldn't have it any other way. All I remember is waking up to my older brother banging on the door and actually broke down my door as I was passed out in my own vomit from trying to commit suicide. How could you ever do this? Like, we had no idea any of this was happening. Um, why wouldn't you tell us? The trouble began her freshman year in high school. She was cyberbullied. And the rumors were all about me being, they would call me a slut, a whore, saying I was sleeping around with people. Um, and then they'd be like, no one likes a girl like that, no one likes you. But I'm very religious and I'm saving sex for marriage. And at that point, I think I'd only kissed like two boys, maybe. And so it was just so, it was so far from the truth. It continued into her sophomore year. The damage was done. The final nail, a text message. Her best friend had died of brain cancer. When she passed away, that was kind of when I was like, I really don't want to be here anymore. I've tried everything and there's no really point to live. And just remember looking at myself, feeling so ashamed and feeling so badly about myself and just being like, this is it. This is, I, I don't want to wake up. 21 years old. Those people that I had known since I was four years old writing horrible stuff about me. Five years removed from her suicide attempt. And I looked up and actually saw this message. Emily now speaks freely about being a survivor. And I'm not sharing my story with people to get like compliments or anything like, look how strong you are. That's not what I'm looking for, but I'm looking for the people that are currently struggling and currently feeling like they can't reach out to anyone and hoping that I can help them in some way. Put your hand over your heart, and if you feel that heartbeat, that's your purpose. When you wake up in the morning and you feel your heartbeat, you know that you are here for a reason and that this world would literally be not the same without you. Hey, Sierra. How are you? Good, how are you? Courageous in her words, committed to her conviction. Emily is inspiring others to live.
Prior to hearing you speak today, I've had constant suicidal thoughts and was planning on acting on them this week. I no longer feel alone and I reached out to my parents right after I heard you talk. Thank you, thank you for saving my life. I don't think people realize that sometimes like one small comment can like affect someone so negatively. Emily's reach is not limited to speeches. She recently produced a two minute video. I'm still Her hope is to shatter the mental health stigma. My dad after I made the video texted me saying, I want you to know you're my hero. And I think I used to see myself as a background character in other people's lives. But now I see myself as my own character in my own story. Already a bestseller. And I'm so happy that my older brother didn't have to walk in and see my dead body on the ground rather than seeing that I'm able to recover. With so many chapters left to write. Well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate you letting me speak and for you guys listening. It means a lot. Thank, Thank you. Voices do carry. I ended up getting that for 50 cents a yard. One. <laughs> We're talking. A bit further than all others. Three o'clock in the morning for weeks, the Lord would wake me up and I didn't know what. It was just weird every day, every morning at three o'clock in the morning. And I finally said, what, 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 Lord? It's like, I want you to buy a sewing machine. And I, I really, I opened up one eye and I looked around. I thought he's not, can't possibly be talking to me. I didn't know you could buy sewing machines. But he was, and so she did. Just a simple $85 sewing machine from Walmart. <laughs> and it didn't stop. And he um, started waking me up again in the middle of the night, take it out of the box and use it. Before Sue Desentel put the pedal to the metal, there was this. Never sewed until I was 55, and I couldn't understand the directions. I couldn't understand. Uh, I started watching YouTube videos. I never even watched YouTube. And um, I had to watch it 87 times to learn how to thread the machine. And I'm just like, Lord, you know I'm old. <laughs> Sue jumped into the spool head first. I thought that's why God invented Walmart. First sewing for her disabled grandchild. She is my motivation. She is my inspiration. You know, at one time they told us she would probably never clap her hands, but she claps every day for herself. And Sue sews every day. I'm thinking, why didn't I get a manicure? <laughs> So cute with his hand fabric. I love this. And she's not alone. I learned the pressing. That was yes, so, so important. important. Dozens of women poured their hearts into clap your hands, all the while prayers were being answered. We'd be down to three dollars, and I'd say, Lord, if you want this to continue, I have to have money. And four separate times, different people came to my house, and they never do that. Knocked at the door and said they wanted to give me a hundred dollars in cash, so I could get some more pellets or more or more. I mean, who does that? The nonprofit produces therapeutic products like weighted blankets, <laughs> items that would set families back hundreds of dollars. One more thing they have to pay for, and uh, they can't afford it. And so who suffers? The kids suffer. Not here, not in this area. <laughs> and 100% free all the time. A glaring need met. The pieces have come together. Oh, yeah. One stitch. Kathy's a worker. At a time. The biggest majority of, of parents is that they, they cry. They'll write me and say, I'm, I'm sitting here in tears because this is the first time my child has ever slept through the night. I mean, what kind of a payday is that? <laughs> That's the best payday ever, you know? You doing good? All because this grandma <laughs> was still long enough to listen. We all want one thing, is for the kids to do the best they can do, and I've got a personal stake in that. And faithful enough to act.